Let's learn about file sneaks. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this is going to be another video in our care series that we're doing with Sarpamitra, our buddy, Matthew Most. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sending uh, Mel, my yes. wife, for sure. It's Matt. awesome. Today, we're going to be doing file snakes from West Africa. So stay tuned for that. You know how much we love file snakes. Hit the like button, please. Hey, guys, what's going on? This is Matt from Sarpamitra, and I got a little partner here, Maggie. She's going to be helping me out today. Originally, Ryan and Ben, we started talking about doing some care videos, um, documenting some of the different things that I've done here in my collection. Uh, Ryan and Ben were actually going to fly out here, but due to the world basically shutting down, um, I talked to Ryan and Ben and thought, well, let's try to keep doing it. We'll video this. I'm going to send this over to the guys. They're going to do any edits necessary, which hopefully Maggie doesn't start breaking out laughing or dancing to Savage in the middle of this and we won't have to do much editing on this. Um, so, a couple of things. Um, you're gonna notice the room's changed around a little bit. Part of that had to do with kind of streamlining the collection in the cages and trying to make things a little bit easier for care in this type of environment with a number of different species, as well as um, a large collection. With that being said, um, we did update a lot of our racks to the ARS uh, hybrid series. We did do the 70, 55, 50 series, and we do have a hatching rack coming here in the next couple of weeks. A couple of weeks ago, we did a um, Herp House Rock video with Clint Bartley of Bartley Reptiles, where Clint and I talked with Ryan, Ben, Dave about certain things that a lot of people don't really think about in terms of their environment and enclosures and how different aspects of it play into effect. Um, what you're gonna notice here on a lot of these racks there, I did drill holes in the sides of the actual tubs themselves. Part of that has to do with the humidity in this room and large moisture building up on the actual top of the tubs. Um, there is ventilation at the top and on the 7055 series you can remove the plastic which is nice for disinfecting as well as sanitation. But not having any ventilation in the actual tubs themselves that extra humidity was building up and when I was pulling out tubs, um, water droplets would drop onto the lower level. Um, in this room itself, it's about 60% humidity and ambient temperature in here is about 71.6. By adding the ventilation holes, one of the things that I've noticed um, just in terms of watching people post things, you have to be very careful with ventilation because if you don't have proper ventilation, you can actually get respiratory infections that mimic and people really should seek veterinarian care instead of going and trying to treat them at home um, because most of that could actually be environmental conditions that could be corrected very easily and fast. Um, this week, to kind of start it off, Maggie, what are we going to talk about? Five snakes. What are we doing? Bio snakes. All right, so um, file snakes over the past <laughs> couple of years have gained a lot of popularity. There's been a lot of questions in terms of their care, how to set them up properly. Um, one of the things I've, I've really kind of streamlined and tried to do was make things easy. Um, with file snakes, there's not a whole bunch of information on it, and these animals have come in as part of a byproduct of the ball python trade. Um, a lot of people, you know, will knock the ball python trade, but it's also brought in a lot of rarer species, uncommon things. And for about 15 years, I was kind of chasing this snake specifically to try to establish them in the hobby. Took a lot of time, as well as a lot of uh, imports coming in. The one thing that I would recommend if you are going to pursue file snakes is most of them are going to be wild caught. You really should bring those to a vet, do fecals, but more importantly, most of the animals will be treated externally for parasites. These animals will be coming wild caught um, in most cases from Africa. They may have ticks on them, so you do want to make sure you check them thoroughly to make sure they don't have any ticks on them. 
but also when seeking veterinarian care, I would recommend doing a lung wash to check for lung flukes. Um, I would also, in that kind of aspect, if you're starting to notice respiratory issues, um, you really want to make sure that you are getting treatment that's proper because lung flukes can actually transfer from snakes to humans too as well. Um, additionally, I've seen lung worms in some animals. Um, it's just something you want to be very precautious with, especially if you have collections. Really, when you get fresh animals, these things should go into quarantine and not be brought into your main collection. Um, most of the files I have now have been here for five to seven years, um, and we've had a lot of good luck, um, both with the cross-eye, which are the forest files, as well as cape files. Um, now, file snakes are named from their unique triangular shape. Um, it's almost representative of a traditional three-way file. Um, these animals, scientifically, this is Ganyotophus cross-eye. Um, I still like Mahila, but the reason why there was a separation actually had to do with the dentition of the actual snakes. Um, Maggie's going to hold this one. And one of the cool things and the reasons why a lot of people have really kind of found these interesting is they are very docile. Um, in terms of care, these animals, I keep them on Cypress Smalls. This is a CB70 series tub, but in terms of their nature, Maggie likes the smaller ones, which we'll pull out too as well. Um, they have a very good feeding response too, but in terms of temperature and humidity, um, typically about 60 to 65% humidity. Um, and when I talk about humidity, it's moisture. You don't want this stuff seeping in water itself. Um, that being said, for temperature, the temperature inside of this tub ranges from 75 to 85 on the hot spot. Um, these animals are classified with house snakes too as well. And some of these do get fairly large. Um, I'll pull out a larger female. And there is sexual dimorphism between the males and the females. A lot of people kind of shied away from bile snakes. I'm going to pull out a little one for Maggie. Um, these were some captive born animals that we had. Maggie prefers the smaller ones versus the bigger ones. Um, this animal is actually going to Peyton, um, who had purchased it uh, several weeks back. But a lot of people shied from the files uh, specifically because of the fact they thought they were snake eaters. Um, and based upon their triangular shape, that's why a lot of people thought they were snake eaters. But if you actually look at the respective diet, um, they are very opportunistic feeders. Um, they'll feed on lizards, they'll feed on fish, rodents. Um, I have never um, fed them snakes in particular, um, but you know some people have fed them snakes too as well. The biggest thing when I ever talk about animals that might be eating something other than rodents is you really want to get the animal established feeding in captivity. Once the animal is established in captivity and feeding, then you can start to play with the food sources themselves. Um, I don't really like to try scenting because I think scenting causes more issues rather than trying to establish them on a frozen thawed rodent diet. Now, there is sexual dimorphism between these, like I was mentioning, so that's a female. And then this one is a male, so you can see the size difference between the two. Want to hold this one, Maggie? Nope. <laughs> but all these animals are established on frozen thawed rodents. Um, you can talk them, feed them, you can feed them by laying the prey items by the hide, which is my preference. Um, but they do do very well in captivity. Um, 
biggest thing is if you are going to pursue wild caught animals, you really need to make sure that you seek professional veterinarian care. And <laughs> like I said, animal hid right away when Maggie tried to grab them. Um, the reality of it is, is captive born really should be what we're trying to pursue in the hobby. We really should be treating all these wild caught animals as if this is the last time we could ever pursue these animals in captivity and treat it in that manner that the wild caught animals go to homes where they are going to seek proper care. Um, with that being said, in terms of breeding of these species, um, the file snakes themselves will lay multiple clutches in a year. Um, we've had as many as three to four clutches in one year from a single female. Uh, this year, based upon weather, I didn't cycle all of the files, but we've been having a lot of good success with them. Um, a lot of the captive born babies have already found homes, and we have a couple of clutches right now in the incubator waiting to hatch. Um, they should be hatching one clutch here any day, but even cooler, and part of the reason we chose to do file snakes as the first species is this is a cape file noticeably for the white back but she's been in her hide all morning and she laid a couple of eggs already for us this year so in a little while, I will pull the eggs. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about setting up eggs too as well. And for setting up eggs, my choice of enclosure are just these GFS plastic containers. Um, I use Perlite as an incubation media. Um, I wet it down, I shake up the container, and then when I go, before I put eggs, it shouldn't drip water, it should just hold and clump together. That's really kind of the key. You don't want to have a ton of moisture in these enclosures when they're incubating, because the more incubation um, water you have inside of it, you could potentially cause more issues for the eggs themselves. And then, just to kind of show some things that were going on here too, uh, we just had a clutch of Huangzai Province Volante just hatch. So these guys will start getting feeding. Um, some are still in the eggs waiting to get out. Um, but these guys will be available soon. And really the next couple of videos we do, we're going to start focusing on more of the animal care. If you have questions, anything like that, feel free to reach out to me, Ryan or Ben. Um, we're hoping to get um, some things with Clint too as well from Barley Reptiles, um, potentially Stan Grumbeck too from the Snake Room down in Texas. And um, if there's something you guys want to know about, learn about, feel free to reach out to myself at Sarpometra or Matt at Sarpometra.com. And with all due, I think Maggie wanted to dance to Savage on the way out of here because she's ratchet, bougie, and classy. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you guys know when there's more videos coming out. And make sure to check out Matthew Most stuff. Sarpa Mitra. That's right. Channel? No, Instagram. Instagram, no, Facebook, he's got all Social media. That's what yeah. I was looking for. That's the one. <laughs> Follow the luck dragon. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys. Hey, guys, what's going on? This is Matt from Sarpometra and I've got Maggie here. She's going to help me out today. We're doing a series of videos for R&B Reptiles and we thought we'd kind of touch base on a couple of things and show what's going on new here at Sarpometra. <laughs> Originally when we started talking about doing this... <laughs> File snakes, right? Yes. Today we're going to be doing... Alright, we're well, just going to leave the generic file snakes. Today we're going to be... You're moving, you're moving. Sorry, 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 sorry. You can't cut and I then like wander off. Okay, okay. He's gonna, you gotta be in the same spot. Stand here and then you, then you talk. I'm saying thanks, like, <laughs> subscribe and share. That's right. Right? Yeah, that was did good. It. And check out Matt's 
channel. Does he have a channel? Okay. Mm -hmm. Instagram. Out. Matt's Instagram too. Thanks Matt again. Sarpamitra USA. Yeah. <laughs>